Now, the other reason why the world needs China is because China is developing the technology that has the potential to change the world as we know it. And there's no greater example than 5G. Now, here in Canada, in North America, we're still waiting for 5G. But in China, 5G is everywhere. Okay, Huawei, the Chinese company, has developed 5G, and they are so far ahead of anybody else in the world that it actually started to scare America because they realized, wow, we are not even close to competing with Huawei on this scale. But the reality is, is that this 5G technology is so important because it powers so many different things. When you have 5G, you can have amazing things happen in your city. It can save costs and improve the lives of your city and of your life, of your people. For example, going back to Shenzhen, that tiny little fishing village that's now transformed into China's special economic zone, this is a fleet of their electronic buses. 16,000 buses in their fleet, every single one of them electric. They're now experimenting with driverless bus systems, all powered by the 5G technology. Shenzhen just opened a metro line not long ago that's powered by 5G. Okay, you have to have this 5G technology to bring you to the front. So again, in China, we have a saying, if you want to see China's past, you go to Beijing. If you want to see the present of China, you go to Shanghai. But if you want to see the future, you go to that fishing village that's now China's third largest city. You go to Shenzhen. That's the future of China. But I say it's not the future of China. It's the future of our world. That's the future city. In China today, it's almost a cashless society. Okay? People are using their cell phones and mobile payments like Alipay, WeChat Pay, to completely transform their lives. 90% okay? of transactions done in China today are done via mobile payments. I was back in China last year on a business trip, and I actually had some renminbi that I had to use. I wanted to get rid of it. And it was so difficult to use that because everywhere you go, everyone is so used to using your mobile phone. Cash was an inconvenience, but this shows the future. China recently launched its first digital currency. And what they did is they experimented again in the city of Shenzhen. And they started giving out a few million dollars worth of this digital currency. And they did an event. They wanted to see how it, locals would spend it. And so they did is they said, if you want to, register for this event. We're going to give you some digital currency. And then you can go to these vendors and you can try it out. Again, the future of the world is being tested right now in Shenzhen. All of this future technology that is leaps and bounds ahead is all being developed in China. So this is why it's important for us to develop a relationship with China, because again, China's showing the way. They're experimenting with stuff that is so far you know, unimaginable that you know, we can't even imagine it here in the West. It's unbelievable what they're doing in China. This is a picture of a countryside in China, completely surrounded by solar grids. China is the largest producer of renewable energy in the world. And this is amazing because obviously China, with its population and the growing amount of infrastructure in cities, they need a tremendous amount of energy. It's very important for China to develop this renewable energy. One, because, again, they need it. But two, they need to start reducing their carbon footprint. I don't know about you, but that's the type of battle that I want to see China and America get into. The race to carbon neutrality. That would be incredible. And in fact, I think that if China and America could learn to work together, I think they could do it even faster. Maybe even by 2040. Who knows? But the reality is, is that when you have the two greatest countries in the world, the two greatest superpowers, I should say, China and America working together, the entire world wins. And that's something that I often say on all of my YouTube videos and my messages when I give speeches like this, is that I'm a passionate American. I love my home country. But I want to see us develop a better relationship with China because I know that if we do, it's going to have a ripple down effect and benefit every single person in the world. Now, we're coming up to the end of this speech, and I want to just basically tell, say one major point. And that is the thing that not only has China developing all of these great technologies, but similar to that graph of sending these overseas visits, China is also sending a very precious resource abroad. And that is Chinese international students. Chinese international students is a tremendous resource. And again, it's why I'm here at the beautiful Thompson Rivers University. So big shout out to Carlos Kong and the entire organization here at the Chinese 
Student and Scholars Association. I want to thank you very much for bringing me out here to Kamloops. It's my first time in this beautiful city, first time at this university, and I'm so honored to be speaking in front of all of you. And especially everybody on YouTube that has taken time out of your day to join us, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining. But Chinese students, Chinese international students, are a tremendous resource. This is something that's been really, that's really undervalued and underlooked. <clears throat> Chinese students started going abroad, let's say, in the 1970s and the 1980s. And you have to imagine, if you were a Chinese national that went abroad at that time, you had to have incredible grades in the, in the university to get out and to be able to actually qualify to attend a university abroad. The reality is, is that for decades, China was sending its brightest minds out of China to go study abroad. And the reality is, is that most of those students, when they went abroad, they never came back. They, if they went to America, they became American citizens. They settled down in America. Okay? It's not until recently that now China has had all of this economic growth that now we've seen the opposite. We're now seeing that Chinese international students are going back to China. But again, many Chinese students around the world. Again, name a major city in the world right now that doesn't have a vibrant Chinese community. Chinese are everywhere. Again, it goes back to that point. The Chinese are cut off from the outside world. Well, how can they be? <laughs> There's Chinese people everywhere. You don't think they're talking back with their relatives back home? But the reality is, is that many Chinese students still do end up settling in beautiful countries like here in Canada. They're eventually going to become a Canadian national, settling down here, you know, establishing their life. A great example of this that I can give is a man by the name of Eric Yuan. Now, Eric Yuan was born in Shandong province. He applied eight times for a visa to the United States, but was rejected all eight times because his English was too poor. Finally, on the ninth time, he became, he was successful. He finally got the visa and he came to California. Okay? He eventually went on to earn an MBA from Stanford University. And then he started his company in 2011 called Zoom Communications. All of us know Zoom now because of COVID-19. Eric is now in 2007, Eric became a naturalized American citizen. His three children were born in America. They're all American citizens. His company, Zoom, American company. He's employing Americans. Everything is benefited because America welcomed this Chinese immigrant student into their country. Eric Yuan is worth $16 billion now because of Zoom communications. He has a tremendous impact into America. He's paying a lot of tax. He's, paying, he's doing a lot, he's creating a lot of jobs. He's really helping the American economy. So it really breaks my heart when I see American senators saying, we need to come out and we need to ban Chinese international students. I had comments on my YouTube channel saying, you know what? We need to do better than that. Let's ban all international students. Why do we even need them here in America? To me, that is such a short-minded mindset. That's not how you get your, your, your country stronger. And that's one of the lessons that I learned here in Canada. Canada is built on diversity. It's literally written into the Constitution here in Canada. And this is why Canada is such a vibrant community of cultures from around the world. But again, we need to learn about these other cultures. We need to bring them in. Okay, we need to learn to work together. And I'm going to close it with this. I'm going to take you to Beijing. To the most important building in all of China's history. This is the Forbidden City. Many of you know it has the picture, the, chair, the picture of Chairman Mao, front and center. And I want to take you in and examine the words that are written on the outside of this building. Most specifically, the words written on the right side. Long live the unity of the people of the world. This is the message that China is sending to the world. Again, this is the message that the Chinese government is putting on the outside of its most important cultural building. Long live the unity of the people of the world. China is willing to work with countries around the world. But it's very really important. What we need to do is we have to realize that China is not this third world country that is now developing. China has to be given the same amount of respect as other Western countries. And this is something very difficult for you know, a country like my home, America. For the, for in a few years, China will overpass America to become the number one superpower, the number one economic force. And this is very difficult for Western countries to really conceive and really to you know, comprehend. Okay? 
For the last 200 years, we've always had a Western country be the number one in the world. And now it's China's turn. This century is now an Asian century. The future is in Asia. I don't think this is a bad thing. But I think what we need to do is we really need to recognize the fact that there are going to be differences. We need to, we need to accept that fact, but we need to build on our similarities. And I'll end it with this again, this comment. When the United States and Canada, the UK, Western countries, when we can learn to work with China, it's going to benefit everybody in the entire world. Thank you. Ni